we tired of the devil pressing us down. Come on, y'all. Come on, it's time to fight. Well, I know, I know it seems like the devil. Seems like he's winning sometimes. But I came here to let you know that the devil is alive. God is true. God said, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, Go get your armor. Go get your armor and fight the fight. Go get your helmet, get your sword, and get your shield. It's time to stand. Stand and do God's will. Everything. Everything is gonna be okay. Yeah. Look out, the enemy is on his yeah. way. Yeah. Watch out now. Come on. But with God, everything. I came to tell you, you don't have nothing to worry about. Just keep your faith in the Master. I need a witness. Marissa. Everything is gonna be alright Though your day seems dark as night Satan's strong but God is stronger So keep the faith and you gotta keep pressing on Everything is gonna be okay God has promised he will make the way God be for us who can destroy us Stand tall, the victory is won What can separate us from God's love? The tribulation on this road Persecution and goodness Oh no, we're more than conquerors On this battlefield God has never lost the battle And I know we never will I'm so cold And I'm ready to go And I'm ready to go We gon' tear it down We're not afraid of being in Come on. Let the devil in the eye tell us. Come on, we're ready. Come on. Come on, devil. We're ready for you now. Soldiers of Christ are right. Devil is over. The body of Christ will come in. What's happening, family? It's time to pray. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 26 on today as we continue our focus on growing and, and really becoming who God would have us to be despite the situation that we're in and despite the season that we're in. We've been talking about a great number of things and on today, the emphasis is going to be be decisive. Be decisive out of Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 46. I want to read the text through, give you a couple of points and then we'll pray together. Then Jesus came with them to the place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and distressed. He said to them, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He went a little bit beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me yet, not as I will, but as you will. He came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, so you men could not keep watch with me for one hour. Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went again a second time and prayed, saying, my father, if 
If this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping. Their eyes were heavy. He, he left them again, went away, prayed a third time, saying the same thing one more time. And then he came to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Watch verse 46. Get up. Let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. This passage reminds us of the significance of what it means to be decisive. Here you find Jesus defining and then illustrating the concept of being decisive and why we as followers need to have that same principle in our arsenal of success. A decisive person is one who doesn't just have plans, dreams, or ideas, but they're willing and compelled to do them. Decide and then do. That's the idea there. It's the notion of moving towards decision uh, of will for the will, plan, action, or aim that's your goal for growth. Whatever it is that you've made your mission or your aim or your desire or your ambition, you don't just think about it. You don't just say you're going to do it. You don't just plan it, but you've got to do it. A, deci a decisive person is one who says, I'm going to make the decision and then I'm going to be strong and get it done. When you and I practice the growth principle of being decisive, we take on the character of Christ, face difficulty, move toward the end, despite whatever it is that we're up against. There are at least several things from this passage that you and I will be able to learn and grab a hold of that I want you to hold on to. Number one, a decisive follower will face current difficulty with their priorities in mind. When you and I have our number one priority in mind, we say like Jesus, we may have a situation where we say, look, this ain't what I want to do. In the, in the garden, he's literally saying, if there's another way, let's do this. However, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Priorities then are what grip your mind and keep you in the face of difficulty to continue to push forward regardless of the turbulence that you're dealing with. Jesus entered and ended his life on the planet with redemption in mind. He came over, uh, over and over throughout the Gospels. We read about him being very clear that he was here to seek and to save that which was lost. He was here to accomplish God's will. He would return back to glory. He was doing something that was his mission. His priorities were always in his mind. And in like fashion, Growing by being decisive demands that we have a clear understanding of what our priorities are and move towards those things. What is number one for you? What is it that you are here to accomplish? What is your priority? I want to share something with you that if you and I are not very clear about what our priorities are, then we will have the wrong things in the front part of our life. There are some things right now that ought not be on the front burner of your life if you follow in the metaphor. There ought to be some things that are pushed back. There ought to be some things that are secondary, tertiary. There ought to be things that are on the peripheral, but they ought not be a dominant place. They ought not have a dominant place in your mind and in your spirit. When you are a decisive individual, you're making sure that your priorities are always number two. I mean, number one. But let me share something with you. In addition to that, not only do you see the decisive followers face current difficulties with priorities in mind, but number two, decisive followers fix their attention on the fruit that will come from the moment rather than the turbulence of the journey. Look at verse 42 again in your mind. Then Jesus went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it's possible for this painful thing to be taken away from me, uh, unless, it, unless it happens, if I must do it, I pray that, the, that what you want will be done. That's the new century version of the Bible. Notice what the emphasis is. When you fix your attention on the fruit that will come from the moment rather than the, the, than the turbulence of the moment, you've got strength to continue to be decisive. The fruit of the moment would be the countless souls that are going to be saved as a result of Jesus' decision to accomplish 
and face the cross. We've got to fix our attention on the fruit of what will be while we address what is, while we face the moment's difficulties. You and I have to learn how to see the fruit, the outcome, the benefit, the blessing of what will come out of you going through this pain. What's the benefit? What's the fruit of, gonna, of what's going to happen as a result of me being decisive and sticking with this? That's what you've got to see. Jesus helps us to remember that we need to see lives being changed from the service that we offer. We need to see the benefits from gain from your labor. We need to see the smiles that are on people's faces, the situations that are made better, the hearts that love God deeper, the advancements that are made as a result of your work, the strength that's gained as a result of you fighting through the occasion. See the fruit of what will be. Obsession on the current occasion makes you and I miss the opulence that's on the horizon. Did you catch that? Obsession on the current occasion will cause you to miss the opulence that's on the horizon. Fix your eyes on the fruit of what will be. Again, number one, we see the decisive followers face current difficulty with priorities in mind. Decisive followers fix their attention on the fruit of the moment rather than the turbulence of the journey. But then number three, decisive followers are faith centered to gain strength and resolve for the season that they are in. Notice in the text, perhaps the most critical observation of this passage is that we see Jesus making monumental, decisive acts while in the midst of deep dialogue with God. He's in the midst of deep, divine dialogue. In other words, he's praying. In fact, he was not going to move forward, going to the cross without a conversation with the Father. In like fashion then, when you and I are being decisive about the things that we want to accomplish in our life, about whatever it is, whatever plans you have, whatever ambitions you have, the occupations you want to take, the faith journey you want to make, the entrepreneurial efforts you have, the faith of the family decisions you need to make, whatever it is, it needs to be better bathed in prayer. A, a, there must be all decisive activity must include a discussion with your creator. Why? Because prayer is the proving ground of your purpose. You can't move forward in any of life ex, life's activities without having a conversation with the one who gave you life. God, our time in prayer with God becomes the catalyst for your strength. It becomes the, the grounding for your resolve to accomplish your will, your aim, your objective, your agenda, your purpose, all of that. Whatever God has placed you on the planet to accomplish, you need to go to God and pray to him about being decisive in the moment so that you can do the thing through the pain, through the turbulence, through the issues, and do just like Jesus. Go to God. God, even when you don't want to face the trouble, when you don't want to deal with the pain, or when you got to fight through the pain, or the obscurity, or the issues, or the trouble, fight through it, and let God's will be done in your life. Listen to me, when you and I, look at the three things we've covered, like Jesus, when you and I are focused, number one, fixed, number two, and faithful toward our God-given mission and objective, then being decisive, followers will happen with power in your life. I want to encourage you like Jesus, be decisive. Be decisive by being focused on your priority. Be decisive by being fixed on uh, your, your, your journey. Be decisive by being faithful toward what God would have you to do. Let's talk to God even right now. Father, we love you. We thank you and we bless you for being a God who can encourage us to be decisive according to the will and the objective that you have for us. Help us, Lord, to not vacillate in not moving toward the ends that you want us to do. Help us to realize, Lord God, that moving forward towards our journey and fruitfulness with you can only happen when we embody the principles that you've shown us through Christ Jesus. We, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see the Son of God, to see our King of Kings make decisions in difficult times. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to know that when we fix our minds on you and fix our minds on the fruit of what will be as a result of living for you and journeying for you, that you'll be the God that will center us all the way through. Thank you for being open and, and, 
impressive for us to talk to you in any moment, in any stage of our life. Lord, we love you. We lodge you and bless you for being our God. God, I pray that you bless your people to continue to grow forward with you in this season, Lord God, where we are caught in the throes of so many different attacks, so many different things that move our hearts and minds away from you. We pray, Father, that you give us the strength and the resolve to not get lost in a moment where so many are at home and so many are not doing things and our routines are out of order and our life is out of order. Help us not to waste time, squander time, or, or misuse this commodity you've given us. Help us to be decisive. Help us, Lord God, those of us that are making decisions to do something new. Help us to do it in a way, Lord God, where we trust your hand in our hand and see your ability and power to help us to navigate. Lord God, we call on you in this season to push us through the, the, the moments where we can't see why we continue to wake and work and weary of ourselves as we do. Help us to see the fruit of lives being changed. Help us to see the fruit of our own person growing better. Help us to see the fruit of you getting glory by our faithfulness. We love you. We honor you. We bless you and we praise you and we ask that you help us to honor you back in the power and the name of King Jesus. In your name we pray and ask all of these things and let us together say amen. Listen, continue to allow God to bless you and to walk and strengthen you as you move forward for the King of Kings. Be decisive, be fixed, be focused, be faithful, and let God bless your journey throughout. I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me. Let's watch our God change everything around. Oh, Lord, my God. Sometimes I wonder When I look at the world That you have made I see the stars I hear the roll Rolling thunder Thunder throughout The universe is Soprano sing.